there was this Jewish lady walking down Beverly Drive, and coming the other way, this flash a guy in his overcoat. And when he gets up to her, he whips open the coat. She looks at him and says, you call that a lining? told me that last night instead of his wife I might just have gone round there and heard a few more and you wouldn't be in a bother and I wouldn't be late for lunch. Maybe you want to, maybe you want to hear the other one. Oh, no time. I, I can't wait to get that flash of one to Congressman Mackey. So what do you think? Oh, I thought it was a good one. No, what do you think about a man killing himself after a thing like that? Oh, if you solve the mysteries of the suicidal mind, you're a smarter man than I, Lieutenant. Call that a lining. Welcome to another episode of the Colombo Confab podcast. This is Steve. And this is Sean. Sean. So, what episode are we watching tonight? Or what, reviewing tonight? Why do we? Why do you sound so surprised, Sean? <laughs> Sean, I'm. I don't know. Do I sound surprised? T- yeah, yeah, you did a little bit. Um, this is interesting because the last episode that we talked about, of course, was Last Salute to the Commodore, directed by Patrick McGowan. Yeah. We're going to watch one, one from the '90s now, directed and starring Patrick McGowan. Wow. Uh, so kind of a, it's sort of a, yeah, how, how segue many, from one to the other. How many episodes has uh, McGowan starred in for in Columbo? Four. 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 And this is the second one. He's been in two 70s ones and two 90s ones. Okay. Um, and we've done one of each. The last one that we saw with him was uh, Identity Crisis, where he played the spy. Right. And... I don't remember if that was his first one or not. There's somebody listening to this right now, of course, that knows. But yeah. um, the others were uh, Ashes to Ashes and uh, By Dawn's Early Light. Uh, hmm. But he, it, what, what I find fun is that after you saw Identity Crisis, obviously, and then I know you, it's probably not completely fresh in your mind, but uh, it, could you tell that it was the same actor? Or if I, if you hadn't no, known it was the no, same actor? No, I wouldn't actor, have. Would no, you? yeah. All the makeup. And it looks like he's a lot thinner uh, yeah. Uh, here. Yeah. Um, but he's got, you know, one of the things, great things about McGowan is his voice. It's yeah. so distinct. Um, I wish I could mimic it. It's just so fascinating. It, mm-hmm. uh, it, almost every line he says, he speaks, is just, just fun to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and all his and, and he really I, I I don't know what if he's like a method actor or what, but uh, you really do believe uh, believe that he's in and you don't you know I don't think of it as Patrick McGowan. I actually think that's you know an actual another character, another murderer. Like um, <laughs> yeah, you know. So he's actually not wearing any makeup or hair pieces or Get anything out. in this. Really, this is that is actually what he looked like. Um, I actually thought the same thing at first uh, until I saw him. He, the other one that he's in, Ashes to Ashes, he looks just like he does in this. Mm-hmm. But the other 70s one that he's in, By Dawn's Early Light, he looks completely different. In fact, I remember thinking that it was Richard Attenborough playing the part. For years, I think I thought it was Richard Attenborough. Yeah. Like before I got really got into Columbo and then I found out it was Patrick McGowan. Well, he's, so, it's uh, really that voice, so that's what kind of... Gives it a more gives him away, but uh, it yeah. goes all over the place like this. Yeah, yeah, it's a very good impersonation, actually. Yeah. So I, I've got a joke for you, Sean. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's it's a Colombo joke. I figure it's appropriate right. for the podcast. Uh, okay. So well, yeah, where does Colum- we never say anything inappropriate? No, not at all. So where does Colombo like to go on vacation? Tell me where. I don't. You, know. You're not going to guess. Okay, he likes to go on vacation to the Bahamas. Nope. 
Okay, where does he like to go? The Falkland Islands. Ha! <laughs> that was my impersonation. I, I did the joke as a setup to laugh like Magoon, so I'm sorry. That was... <laughs> uh, no, I like the joke, Steve. That was a really... You, you know really the scene I'm talking joke. about, though, at least. Yes, Please the part where you know I'm talking joke. about it. I'm not yes. going crazy. All right. We'll talk, we'll talk about that scene. He has a very distinct laugh. Yeah. Uh, about an Irish <sighs> and a Jew. Yep. Uh, I hope they won't offend. <laughs> Maybe the Irish. Anyway, you call that a lining? Anyway, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so, you, uh, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's the podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful evening. So, in case uh, it, it, you 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 probably have thought of this, but there is another political uh, episode. Oh God! Moment. Yes, but uh, yeah, this one is the world of politics. Specifically, uh, we we have uh, Patrick McGowan as Oscar Finch, yep. who is a high powered defense attorney, I believe, yep. and he is running the campaign or planning to run the campaign for Congressman Mackey, Mackey. Um, who is who has just been asked to be run as vice president alongside Governor M- Montgomery. Drugs are bad, now, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> Governor Montgomery has the most boring campaign posters and bumper stickers that I've ever yeah. seen anywhere. I don't know how, spoilers, he wins the election at the end, but man... He must have he was a running lot of against charisma. Clinton. Oh wait, we better not get political because <laughs> we already got called on that, didn't we, on an email? Yeah, we can't make any jokes. Yeah, they don't. They don't say whether or not he's Republican or Democrat, yeah. and really, in the long run, it really does not matter. matter. But all of his stuff is blue, so I'm going to assume that he's Democrat. Make America great again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, so um, I'm not going to say don't. You're 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 tr- you're poking the bear with a stick. <laughs> Well, I, I, I have to admit, when this episode started and I realized it was going to be a political episode, I started yawning. I just, nothing bores me more than politics. I And the first ten minutes of this are just guys in suits talking, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And um, so uh, Mackie gets the uh, vice president. He's going to run as the vice president yeah. running mate. To, and uh, they go home at night. Oscar Finch uh, kisses his wife goodnight. And then he gets a phone call. And what I well, love... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, what do you Go love? ahead. No, he, please. What I, I lo- okay, th- there has been no music. Well, there has been in the opening credits. They've been playing... Dun, 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 that song. Um, there is no music. He gets this phone call. And you can tell. We only hear his side of the phone call. But you can tell by his demeanor that he's not happy. And that it's important. And then they start with a very subtle, subtle music. Boom, boom. Like, okay, so this, this whole thing, the whole game is about to change. Yeah. And you know, by the way, the both the music and the way the McGowan plays it, that the second after he hangs up the phone with this person, he knows that he's going to have to kill the person that he just got off the phone with. You know, or that he he has to kill any somebody. Yeah. Um, so he immediately puts the phone down, thinks about it a minute, says goodnight to his wife. Yeah. Gets some, uh, goes to his office after getting some tinfoil and some pliers. Yeah. I, well, I, I got to admit that the scene uh, where he's collecting his tools that he's going to use, mm-hmm. you know, he takes the uh, rubber gloves from the kitchen sink, uh, mm-hmm. some tinfoil, folds them up nice and square. Uh, then, he, then he picks out some pliers from his toolbox. And I'm thinking, what is go- what is he gonna do? What what could tinfoil pliers, well, rubber gloves? I can kind of guess where he's going with that. But the other things, I had, I was totally intrigued by him. But what what he was? Oh yeah. But what what yeah. what he was setting up? And then he goes to his office. It's like midnight, and and he he burns some cigars, um, and he's setting so- this whole thing up on his desk, and it's an ASMR wet dream. Just watching him do all this stuff so methodically. Um, I, no, I'm no, serious. you're right. You're right. I didn't think of it like that. Uh, he takes. He's got the folded up tin foil uh, that when he puts it down on his desk, he makes sure it's in line. He presses it down so it's nice and easy, easy, uh, even mm-hmm. on top of his desk. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's great. Just murderer setup stuff. Oh, is yo yeah. oh, no? It really was. It was fascinating to watch. Absolutely. Um, I have a question though for you. So he yeah. he, he crumpled up a cigar 
and uh, mm-hmm. burned it down to ashes. Why did he do that? Because his alibi was going to be that he was with a client in his office uh-huh. and that they were smoking cigars. I so see. the next day, when the secretary came in and she's you know spraying the air, you know that that's sort of his alibi. It's a lousy way to set up an alibi, but mm. you know yeah. I, we've seen better on the show. Uh, it turns out that it's going to be or it's going to set up to be uh, Congressman. Mackey, but um, yeah. yeah, so but, yeah, yeah, that, that that ends up being one of the the plot points that Columbo's going to pick up on. But one thing, yeah. Mother Nature decides that she's going to have her say in this. Uh, so a thunderstorm rolls in, and uh, that I think is part of the. I think that's the big clue, the big oh, yeah. send off for Columbo to the hone in on uh, on Oscar Finch as being the murderer. Um, but yeah, that. I knew that was going to be because they made a, a distinct point to make sure you heard the the, the thunder clouds coming in. I thought that was really really interesting. Yeah, yeah. While he's doing all his you know murder, he's got his and what I I never really thought of this before, but he's got the gun and the newspaper article already set up in his safe. Mm-hmm. So he's been planning this for a long time. Yes, that's he right. He just doesn't know when he's going to have to do it. So yeah, that, goes, I, I was wondering because wouldn't the gun be registered in his name? But I guess not if uh, if he had been planning this. Yeah, yeah. There are problems with that because uh, after watching that one with William Shatner, I keep thinking about fingerprints. Um, a really good clue would have been the fact that the victim's fingerprints are nowhere on the bullets of the gun. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, so he goes. He walks in the rain. Frank's house. To Frank Staplin's house, yeah. a teddy bear of a guy uh, who wants Oscar to do him a favor, uh, b- something illegal, um, like he did back in 1969. Yeah, shred some documents or something. Yeah, I, I, but, I suspect yeah. Frank was in the in the in the mafia or something like that. That was my suspicion. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. And uh, uh, or had ties to the mafia. Mm-hmm. Oh God, I'm glad that he. W- I'm glad that wasn't a thing, actually, because then we'd have the mafia showing up again, and I've had I've had enough of Colombia and the mafia. <laughs> and um, so, uh, you know, at, when uh, Frank isn't looking, Oscar pulls out the gun, and within like half a second, oh, shoots yeah. him in the head. It's, it, all, it's really quick. I had to watch it twice. It happened so yeah quickly. And, really? <laughs> and it it was so I don't know. I mean, it's very personable or yeah. personal. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I found it odd though. If Frank is as big and as wealthy a guy as he apparently is, he doesn't have any security at all. Uh, well, you mean like things like burglar alarms? Why would he turn the burglar? No, alarm like just on? like a, I don't know, a, a, a bodyguard or something like that. Uh, I, I he's, he's home alone. Uh, you know what I mean? I the, don't he he even says that says to. To Oscar, that his wife is in Hawaii and the maid is off tonight, and I'm here alone. Oh, and why would he tell? How him conveniently, that? how conveniently he can say that. Yeah, yeah it's it's that, really that's... for us. So um, he uh, uses the, uh, the the powder, the gunpowder from the bullet that he extracted uh, to blow it on uh, Frank's hand. Mm-hmm. Puts the newspaper article saying Mr. Lucky's about to be indicted. So it looks like Frank committed suicide. And then he walks back to the office while it's raining. That's when it's raining out. And uh, throws away the uh, cigar ashes and returns home. And there's your perfect crime. Right. But it's not, obviously. This there have is been one mistakes. Of those... Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is one of those where while you're watching it, you can actually see the mistake that gets him at the end. Mm-hmm. So my question to you, without revealing what the mistake is... Um, did you notice the mistake? Are we talking about the cheese? Yes, the cheese. Um, I didn't pick up on that right away, no. Um, because I've got some issues with that clue. We'll discuss okay. that at the end. Okay, okay, all right. I have some issues with it, too, but uh, okay. Yeah, now the, so, the, the blood drop, I didn't I didn't think of that. I, I wouldn't have thought blood would have dried that quickly. Um, what else? I, I, I no, I guess I really didn't pick up on many, many clues that could have given him away. I just knew that the rain was going to have some effect at this point. It did, yeah. 
And at first, well, okay, well, Columbo shows up on the scene. And we see oh, we, we see pick. Sergeant Kramer. Yes. Yay, Sergeant Kramer. Bruno Kirby. Or is it Bruce? Bruce. It's Bruce Kirby. It's Bruce. Getting the two of them mixed up. Just like Jim and John Belushi. And, and um, we get a wonderful, wonderful how-to guide to use a fax machine. <laughs> Last episode, we found out how to sail a yacht or <coughs> drive a yacht. I don't even fucking know what, what, what you call that. But now we learned how to use a fax. I think and, that uh, that was more for the murder she wrote grandmas than for anybody else. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. And it was such a minor thing. I mean, so all we know is that he sent a joke to his wife and why and he only got one page out of out of two so i guess he was interrupted uh that was yes. that was the clue he got interrupted during the yes fax. but i would have thought most people would know what a freaking fax machine was in well, the early 90s yeah when was this episode released i knew you're gonna ask me that and i could have looked it up and i chose not to i'm looking it up now it was released in 1990 okay Okay. So, wow. fax okay. machines have been qu- around quite a while before 1990. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know when they were invented, but I did Google when was the earliest, um, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The earliest um, uh, machine fax that was machine? fax machine that was available to the public, general public, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and it was 19. What did I write that? It was like 1969, I think it was. Right. So. That's almost 30 years, let's assume. Yes. By the time. He the, should have known what a fax machine is. I'm sorry. Yes. And, the, fact, and, the, and that, the poor actress were, who was demonstrating, the, the secretary, Rebecca, whatever, um, she was so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to kill was, myself after watching she, her talk. She was clearly on under the influence of some something uh, that that morning after coming in and finding out that her Rebecca boss Christie. was dead. Rebecca Christie. Rebecca Christie. Rebecca Christie. Um, one thing about fax machines is that um, it is – you're right about the date. I know this because of a movie called Almost Famous, which is set in the late 60s, early 70s. And the guy says, yeah, you're able to send pages. It sends – they go through at the rate of one page every four minutes. Yeah. And I remember as a kid going to my mom's office where she worked and it came out on thermal paper. And it would, so it yeah. came out all thin and curly. I um, that. So, Yeah. And we still have a fax machine in our office. We use it a lot. <laughs> well, because you... Well, you can because... hire Rebecca and she can uh, <laughs> do the fax machine for you. Send off the faxes. <laughs> Which is short uh, for facsimile. Did you know that? Yeah. Oh, I get what you see. Yeah. Now, and for those of you... I mean, I get it. Just... Columbo is not... He's not really into technology, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, whatever. I'm sorry. What were you going to say? These machines, they baffle me. Um, and not only that, but we also found out how to redial a phone, how to hit the redial button. Mm. And as luck would have it, who's a, whose house does it call but Oscar Finch's? Yes. So, yeah. Well, let, so, can, can we rewind? I want to go back to where absolutely, uh, Columbo absolutely. comes in on the scene. Oh, uh, yeah. they, they clear out all the, um, all the detectives, the photographers, and whatever. And so they're looking at the body, and we go through the the clues he sees the gun but he can't understand why the blood is dry and did not stick to the gun i want to know how this guy would have committed suicide because he would have where where um oscar was standing it was to the left of frank right so it would have been the shot to the left temple correct it would have been he was sitting to his it would have uh i don't remember no no the, the bullet wound was in his right temple. It was in his and right he temple. Put, he put the gun in his right hand. Yeah, but he shot. He shot Frank from his left side. He came from the left side of the desk. But he came up from behind Frank, held the gun up really quickly to his head, and did it. Does that I make thought. Sense? Yeah, but no, I thought he was standing to the left, and so the the gunshot would have been on the left side of the temple. Okay, well, obviously I'm wrong because that would have been a, a dead giveaway. Um, if. I, I just saw it because I'm watching it as we're oh okay as we're doing this and I I, I just saw it so but you're right that would have been a dead giveaway yeah but, but um, uh, yeah apparent and apparently uh, what kind of cheese is this oregano oh oh yeah so that's a good that's uh, a good stuff which next time I go to uh, the grocery store I'm going to pick up some because I'm curious as to what the hell this stuff tastes like 
I want to know if if you can't if your doctor tells you that you've got bad health, why your doctor would advocate you getting a big huge block of ten dollar cheese. <laughs> Well, the way Columbo made it sound, now this is 1990 money, but I think it was what he said, like a piece, the piece that he broke off for Sergeant Kramer was like $12 worth yeah. of, so that would have been... Oh, no, no, he said he said the whole block was $10. Oh, I thought he said like that, that piece that he had cut off. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like, this shit's yeah. more expensive than caviar. There, There is a, an episode where there, there's some caviar uh, at the scene of the crime, and he eats it. He eats that, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he basically tells Sergeant Kramer to make sure that the boys uh, wrap up the cheese because it's going to travel. <laughs> I thought that was great. That stuff's going to travel. He's, uh, uh, yeah, so Columbo is stealing from the crime scene. I'm surprised. He, he likes his cheese. That's why I yeah. want to try it so much. I want to see how good this stuff is. It's good. It's excellent. Um, yeah. Do you have Central Market there in Dallas? Yeah. They sell it at Central Market. Um, and, uh, yeah, it is really good. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to eat this whole thing and then I'm going to die of a heart attack because a human shouldn't consume that much Is it, is it a soft cheese or a hard cheese? It looked like a hard cheese from, uh, the show. It is a hard cheese. It, yeah, it is a hard cheese. And it, if you smell it, it doesn't smell that good, but, <laughs> you know, like it's feet? the kind of, I don't think it smells that bad. That's probably why Columbo would like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Kramer wasn't too sold on it, was he? Yeah, well, it's different. <laughs> no, Kramer was like, can we just work on the fucking case? Stop talking about fucking cheese. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, 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 okay, let's, yeah. Well, let's continue on. Um, so, so uh, yeah. yeah, so the redial thing. Yeah. So Columbo ends up going to, uh, to Oscar Finch's home, where he talks to the wife, who seems really kind of, Non caring, she's she's not too, I don't know, too friendly to Columbo. So yeah, I guess he heads off to uh, uh, Oscar's uh, law office. Mm-hmm. And that's where we meet Oscar's Oscar. Like we're again, this is this is a guy you call by his last name. I think Finch. He's not a nice uh, Louise, his secretary. I love Louise, the secretary. In fact, I want a Louise, the secretary. I was going to ask life. you. I put my notes. Do you have a Louise at your law office? I do have a. I have a couple Louises at my law office. I've got somebody that makes sure I go to things on time, and I've got somebody else that files things for me. And you know, but uh, yeah, she she knew what was going on. She had it in control. She had a Every bottle, she had a bottle of Febreze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the whole conversation about uh, 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 the Febreze. That was pretty good. Um, no, it's not Febreze, actually. But cause... it's yeah, it's something else. It's, uh, <laughs> it's what we use today. Yeah. But yeah, um, I liked it. But at first, she was kind of a bitch to to uh, Columbo. But yeah, but that's because she thought she was, he was the one with the uh... yeah. Columbo has a problem with lighting up in public. He really hasn't learned yet that you're not supposed to do that. You don't light up cigars in people's offices and, and stuff. You, that's a no no. I don't think that people did that in the nineties. Uh, you know, I think that by then I don't, I don't think so. Um. So <clears throat> there's this hilarious. He he actually accidentally parks in uh, Oscar Finch's spot. Mm-hmm. Where the ground is dry, by the way, because uh, he was parked there all night. And um, there's this scene where um, Finch comes in and says, who's parked in my parking space? And he has some interesting words to describe Columbo's car, such that mm-hmm. that desiccated relic, that no, oxidized relic That's is it. yours. Oxidized relic. You really do a good impersonation of... Uh... McGowan here. That's that's really quite uncanny. No, you mean that oxidized relic is yours? It's just hearing him say oxidized relic just sounds really good. I mean, that's like a really just two words that sound really good when said by Patrick McGowan. Yeah, and but this so, is, this is where also I think it, for me I thought it was the biggest clue uh, when Columbo actually parks into to uh, Finch's spot. He notices the dry spot. The pavement mm-hmm. everywhere else is, is wet, except for one dry spot. But that goes along with Finch's story that he was there at the office yeah. talking with a client. Okay. But the point being, though, that we later find out 
that Finch admits, or he has, he he says he was meeting with McKay, um, and Mackie. so there was not a second dry spot. Yes, but that could have yeah. that could have been easy coverage to say, oh well, he took a taxi. But I guess that would have he would have found the taxi driver if that was the case. Yeah, but whatever. And also, when Mackey told Columbo that he had driven, he didn't. Yeah, um, they didn't know about he didn't know about the fact that there was only one dry spot. But uh, yeah, and who? But would I don't that? think I don't think Columbo knows that it's him just yet. Um, I think Columbo doesn't know. And by the way, Columbo is really fucking relentless. Oh yeah. With, uh... <laughs> well, well, the problem is with uh, with Finch is he doesn't give Columbo like in this scene we're talking about when they first meet in the office. Columbo probably only says a couple of lines. Uh, Finch is talking so fast and dominates the conversation. Columbo really never gets to ask him any questions um, or any follow ups, and so he's always kind of coming after him. Um, and I, I don't know. The, I, I felt that kind of incriminated him a bit, uh, that he was avoiding Columbo. Like, he was waiting for Finch outside of a residence uh, in his car. He walks up to Finch as he's in his vehicle, asks him a question, and he just speeds off. He's like, are you done with me? And yeah. Columbo goes, well, I guess so. <laughs> just takes right off. <laughs> does, there's he does another... it twice. There's another scene where we've got an old over-the-shoulder shot of Finch driving his car. He turns the corner. Mm -hmm. He sees Columbo's car parked up ahead, and he gets angry, so he slams his hand on the steering wheel. Like, fuck, this guy is still following me. Well, Um, he's got great ambitions. And and we probably should mention that. Yeah, so Finch is helping uh, this Paul McKay, this this congressman, be the uh, vice president um, for this, or he's gonna be the running mate for uh, uh, what was the uh, the guy who was running? Montgomery. Montgomery. Thank Montgomery. You. Thank you. But so he supposedly will get a um, what was it? Attorney General. Yeah. Well. Okay. Well. You know, that's the long term goal. Probably the short term goal is some sort of cabinet post. Yeah. But uh, of course, if the vice president then runs for president and and wins, then then. Um, well, that's definitely what. Yeah, that's his intent. Yeah, that that will be the long term goal. That, that he would be the uh, attorney general. Um, all of this, this relationship between Finch and Mackey, is very reminiscent of a certain person's relationship with their lawyer. That's in the current news, <laughs> Michael Cohen, <clears throat> because uh, Finch really is the person that is you know that takes care of stuff probably yeah. for Mackey that you know brushes stuff under the rug and knows where all the bodies are buried. Not literally, of course, but mm-hmm. um, where were we on this? Oh yes, so, so Columbo's when he finally does get the question, I mean, he, he said, "Well, he, he asks, what did uh, did Frank sound like over the phone?" Because Finch was saying, oh, I never met the guy. He was just looking for me as counsel, and I refused. And he said he'd pay me any money, any amount that I wanted. Uh, and one, I thought, if Sean was in this situation, if you had somebody who desperately wanted your counsel and would pay you any amount, would you would you decline even if you knew they were guilty? Or am I, is that something you don't want to admit to over a podcast? Well, you have, your, you have discretion in um, accepting something like that Mm -hmm. um once you are retained once you say i will represent you but no you don't have you don't have to represent every single person that calls you or walks through your door that wasn't my question Um, sir what was your question would you do that would i do what knowing knowingly if someone was guilty take any sum of money they offered you whatever you wanted would you take the case when you say knowing that they're guilty do you mean yeah sure (laughs) Okay. You can edit that. I'm just... no, <laughs> I didn't realize no. after I came out There's mouth, a I'm million like, lawyers. You may not say... want to answer that one. Sorry. Well, you know, okay, so just because you know that your client did let's pretend that your client says I did it, I killed him. Um I did put know, the I roofies can't... in her drink, yes. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> your client admits to doing the criminal wrongdoing. You can't have your client lie on the stand. So you get around that by just having your client plead the fifth. And no one's going to ask you about the, the case. You're not a witness in the case. You're, the, you're a lawyer. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to talk about anything that your client tells you in that instance. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's 
sure, if you're going to give me a million dollars and you're going to have, you're going to go to court, you're going to have a lawyer one way or the other. So you may as well pay me the million dollars than the other lawyer down the street. You know, you're going to get a lawyer one way or another, and it's going to work the same way. So even guilty people there, th- need lawyers. There's a mini documentary um, about the I think it's called People versus OJ. I think that's the name of it. We, like yes, Kubik, uh, Kubik yes. Jr. plays OJ. Uh, Travolta plays Shapiro. Uh, but there's a scene where Shapiro, the way they play it out in this, and I don't know how accurate it is, but uh, that Shapiro knows more than likely he's guilty. He's done it. Uh, mm-hmm. But he even asks OJ uh, a few times, "Did you do it, OJ?" And OJ's like, "No, no, no, I didn't do it." But he keeps asking OJ, keeps harping on that. I thought that was an interesting point. I'm sorry. I'm going from a different even, show. Even if OJ said yes, you know, Shapiro can't do it. Did you, who played Shapiro? That, Cuba Gooden Jr.? No, no. Uh, that was uh, John Travolta. Oh, I'm thinking of somebody else. Okay. Yeah. Johnny Cochran is who I'm thinking about. I'm like, how could John Travolta <laughs> play him? <laughs> No, definitely not Johnny Cochran. Yeah, that's made by the same folks. I, is that the one that was made by the same folks as American Horror Story, or is that the other one? Well, that two... had the same actress uh, who played... Sarah Paulson? Yeah. Sarah Paulson yes. played... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I need to see that. Everybody's seen that. I'm not going to be the You'd last probably person to see Well, that. and I thought you would enjoy this episode, especially because you being a lawyer, and there are lawyers in this, after all. Yeah. Did you enjoy any of that? Did any of it seem fake? Um, like conversations, okay. topics. All right. Well, uh, 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 not not slang necessarily. words no, that you're the, using in the business. Anything like that? This is this is the second one that we've done where there's a lawyer. And now no, uh, he's not the same type of lawyer as I am. He's a criminal defense attorney. I'm a I'm a plaintiff's attorney in, in, in civil matters, and um. There are no preposterous court scenes uh, to be seen, um, like in Ransom for a Dead Man. Um, he seemed to me like a real lawyer, like I totally got that. Mm-hmm. Um, how short he was with Columbo, where he was vi- he was very calculating in what he said. He was very careful in what he said to Columbo so that he didn't incriminate himself. In fact, even at the end, he doesn't confess. He just says, one bite of cheese. Oh, um, don't spoil it. I'm assuming these people have seen this, seen Columbo. Uh, so, I, you know, I believed that he was a lawyer. I thought that was cool. And um, he was very good at avoiding questions, too. Like, there was a question where I think Columbo specifically says, where were you? He says, are you accusing me? And Columbo goes, well, I do need to ask you, where were you on the night of... <laughs> Excuse me, wow. <laughs> where were you the night of uh, the murder? And, and he never answers the question. <laughs> Well, he does. He says that he was in his office with a client. No, no, this was this was later. I think he or earlier and before he had that as a story. But then he came back. You know, he said I have I had a a client. Uh, uh, what's what's that called when you attorney don't have... client privilege? Yeah, um, but yeah. Which is interesting because he told his wife exactly a different story. Exactly yeah, I thought that would have come up, but it didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, he told his wife he was going to go see a campaign contributor, but I suppose I I don't know. She thought it, she it, probably thought, oh, it's his gay lover. And <laughs> yes, Steve. I'm in sure the middle that's of the exactly night. Where's what... he going? He's not going to go talk to somebody about money. <laughs> Come on. Yes, I'm sure that's exactly. She's a smart girl. She was thinking. She knows Steve. better. I'm sure that's exactly what she was thinking. Uh, fun fact, though, about Oscar Finch and his wife, they have a crystal egg in their room, in their living room, oh, just like the folks in Risky Business. Um, you ever see that movie, Risky Business? Yeah, a long time ago. I didn't see the crystal egg, though. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful it's home. There. So I think Columbo figures out pretty quickly he's not going to be able to crack uh, Finch here. So yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he decides to go after... Poor uh, Paul McKay. Um, oh, wait. No, Mackie. It's Mackie. Oh, Mackie. He goes after poor, poor Paul Mackie. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I want to I ask you this. Mm-hmm. Um, he's pretty relentless in pursuing Finch. He literally follows him everywhere. It, there are like five different conversations with Finch, each in a different place. Um, 
inwardly, Finch must be getting really angry with Columbo, but he really has this really cool veneer. It's not gonna, he's not gonna let it show that it bothers him. And there's a scene, I, oh, well, I was gonna ask you this. When do you think that Columbo knew it was Oscar Finch? I think, well, I wrote in my notes, um, when, when he visits him at the state, well, he's not at the same, at a, uh, it's almost like an auditorium. I'm not real sure. The, ho- the hotel? Yeah. The ballroom in the hotel? Yeah, and he, he asks about, you know, can you tell me where you were that night? And he avoids the question. Or he, he does some double double speak. He just kind of does... He he says a lot, but doesn't answer the question. To me, I think Columbo picked up on that, and that's when he knew he had the, the right guy. I think it was with the jokes. Um, when he asked... Finch what the last words of the dead man were and he said what the hell am I going to do what the hell am I going to do Jesus Jesus. and then Columbo and, says oh, yes sir I've been thinking about the last words he said what am I going to do what am I going to do in that word <laughs> no he says what the hell am I going to do he actually repeats what the hell am I going to oh. and I wrote down in my notes Columbo will say hell but he won't say Jesus that is, yeah, that is a that's a yeah. good Catholic, I think. Um, but uh, and then when Columbo leaves in that scene, um, or maybe it's Finch that leaves, he says, oh, "Have a nice remainder of the day." I have used that phrase so many times now since I've seen this. The first time I saw this, have a have a pleasant remainder of the day. In fact, the last time I used it, I actually sent it in a text to somebody. You sure did. I, I've text. actually pulled up my text because I'm like, say, wait a minute. I think he sent that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Have a pleasant remainder of the day. I love that. I, I um, Yeah, and I responded back jokingly, but I had no idea that's what you were referencing. Yeah. Oh, you had a really good response. We'll have a good winter solstice or something. Like that. Um, but, of course, later on when he meets, it, it, we, we got to talk about this. This scene is great. It's my favorite scene when they're in front of the courthouse, I think. Mm. And uh, Columbo says, well, sir, you know, it's kind of unusual that he would say those words to you when he, uh, you, you, you caught him, like, you know, you know, right after he was faxing jokes to his wife. Right. And then he tells him the Jewish joke about uh, the, the lining. And uh, as you said, the laugh. There's this huge, he tells yeah. the punchline to the joke. And there's just dead silence. He goes, ha! And then dead silence. And then he starts <laughs> laughing. But it's, he's not laughing because of the joke. He's laughing because Columbo's made him late. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's apparently an, an anal son of a bitch. And he's, he's a taskmaster, this guy. It's so awesome, that scene. Because when he starts laughing, we get a far... The camera pulls back and we get a far shot. Columbo's on one end of the car. Finch is on the other end of the car. And it's the first, like the biggest, the first wide, sh- well, that's not the first wide shot, but it's, it's a really good shot. A really good shot by Magoon. Hats off to him for that. Yeah. There's a few of those in this, actually. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah, which, which is interesting, because it's, it's people talking in rooms. There's not much you can do in, in, as far as, you know, fancy camera mm. work there. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, no, so yeah, we, I think Columbo figures out he's not going to get anywhere with Finch. So he goes to talk to Paul McKay. Uh, uh, um, Mackie. Oh my I'm God. sorry, sorry, Mackie. Mackie. I can't. Sorry. Uh, talks to Paul Mac- <laughs> Mackie, and um, and he finds out that Paul doesn't like to smoke, or he quit smoking. Mm-hmm. Um, which doesn't explain the, the cigar smell in the office that you know uh, uh, Mr. Finch uh, worked so hard to to do try to try to I guess establish. You know, at first I thought when he did that, I thought he was trying to cover up the the gun smoke or the, the smell of gun. Fu- Gunpowder. I think it was that would have been a second objective. Mm. You're right, because I th- although the smell of gunpowder would have faded by the morning, probably. Yeah, but that is quite correct, huh? But huh. Uh, so, Mister Colombo is is wanting to get an autograph from Mister Mackey or Mister Mackey <laughs> from from no, Paul Mackey. Ma- Paul Mackey. It's Paul Mackey. Congressman. We're not Paul talking Mackey. about South Park. I'm sorry. Uh, but anyways, uh, he wants to get an autograph. And I'm thinking, for Mrs. Columbo, of course. And I'm thinking, Columbo's got to have one of the greatest autograph collections in California. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah uh, who else? You always, always asking for autographs and, you know, always for 
Never mind. He put them up in his office, and people would be like, "Well, what are all these people? These are all the people I put in jail." <laughs> By the way, in reality, after putting you know fifty something famous people behind bars, as a defense attorney, you would have thought that Oscar Finch would have heard about Lieutenant Colombo at some point or another. I guess. You know? California yeah. is a big state. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I know we're not right. from LA, and we really don't understand that culture very much. But uh, so one of the, one of the other big clues uh, that Finch does is he he's wearing his raincoat when you know it's pouring down rain. And he throws his rain jacket into the corner, and I guess that gets collected by um, a uh, a delivery truck or a a cleaner truck, which those don't exist anymore. Um, did you like the uh, the driver of the the clothes uh, clothes dryer? Yeah, that was really service? weird. That was a weird scene. He just, you know, if you were driving, whether or not you're driving a, a delivery truck, and a guy runs up to you and says, "Can I ask you a question?" Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I can't remember what he said, but he cracks a joke. The delivery guy cracks a joke. Oh no, he says. He says, oh, can you tell what I do by the side of the van? He points at... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, something uh, sarcastic. Yeah. Asshole. And then he says, do you, do, you, do, you, do you ever deliver clothes for a Mr. or Mrs. Finch? No, I have no Finches, no Sparrows, no Robins. I do have a Mrs. Bird, though. Although uh, people say I used to be absurd or something to that effect, and he drives away. Is this some kind of comedian that the producers owed a favor to? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, here's my chance. I don't know what the fuck was up with that scene. I don't know why they had to put it in, but it's was so that Peter out Fox's of place. Nephew, I mean, come on, what's going on? He looks like a guy. The guy actually seemed familiar to me. Um, I want to say that he was the guy in the movie Goodfellas, the security guard that helps them plan the Lufthansa, uh-huh. um, the Lufthansa heist. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I haven't about? seen that movie in so long. I don't oh know. my god, that's a great movie. Oh, it is a good movie. I just haven't seen it forever. See, when we're done doing this podcast, we should do like, you know... Mafia movie podcast? Uh, I don't know, but something... So, okay, so the the guy's name was <laughs> Michael, Goldf- Michael Goldfinger, and he was in Men in Black, <laughs> Little Nicky with Adam uh, uh, Sandler. Oh god, okay. And Ho- Home Alone 2. Uh. Home Alone 2... Lost in New York. Oh, that one with Donald fe- Trump. Yeah. Also, fe- oh my God, and he was in. Oh my God, I forgot about this show. He he was also in an episode of the Cosby Mysteries. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing. The Cosby yes, Mysteries. Yes, the book, the Cosby Mysteries. When, when was this out? Um. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it went was from Doctor 19- Huxtable. No, no, Do it was uh, ninety. Ninety four to ninety five, and on IMDb it says that it was a comedy crime drama. Bill Cosby plays a guy named Guy Hanks. It's got James Naughton in it. Probably, that's not James Naughton from Pod Shock. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Rita Moreno is in it. Uh, Bill Cosby, of course. Oh, we should, wow. We should review that for like an April Fool's. Oh yeah, the Cosby Mysteries. My God, I wonder if this is on D- on DVD. I doubt it. Man, oh man. I, I I imagine the Cosby Mysteries probably was everything wanted to be everything that Monk was. I don't recognize anybody else in this at all. Was Obviously, it was it like a one time movie special? TV no, it movie says special, it or? says that there were there were uh, uh, eighteen episodes, and. Uh, uh, I guess it says that uh, Bill Cosby plays Guy Hanks, a criminologist who works for the New York Police Department. After winning the lottery, he retires, but feeling bored, he occasionally helps his friend, Detective Adam Sully, whenever he's stumped. My hmm. God, that sounds wonderful. Um, where were we? Anyway, yeah, Michael Goldfinger played the uh, the laundry driver. He was in the Cosby Mysteries, and yeah. And, uh, but so 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 Columbo wants to get his hands on uh, Finch's uh, dirty laundry that he was wearing that day. So uh, he goes to the uh, the ethnic dry cleanery, uh, the, gl- the ethnic dry cleaners. Yes. yes. 
<laughs> Mr. Edmir. Yeah, Mr. Amir. And um, he finds out, he finds uh, Finch's clothes, and there's water stains on the... Uh... Oh, after sniffing the clothes. Yes, well, I thought it was odd, because sniffing came in to play in this episode early with the cheese. Mm-hmm. Like, he was under the desk, but he smelled something, and it was the cheese that was giving off the aroma. So in this time, though, he, I guess he's sniffing the clothes. Well, I'm just glad they he wasn't sniffing dirty sno- socks for once. Thank oh, God thank for God. that. Yeah. Um, the uh, so so he sniffing, um, and he ma- makes a good point. He says, it "Doesn't smell like cigars." And then he uh, it, uh, then he points out the water stains, but unfortunately. Uh, he's trying to uh, convince Mr. Amir to let him take the clothes because apparently Colombo doesn't have a warrant to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And But unfortunately, Amir's underling sticks the stuff in the dry cleaning machine before Colombo has a chance. And, uh... So I, I just want to kind of go off the beaten path with this scene. Um, now, when I watch Colombo episodes, I, I started doing this about two episodes ago. I, I started putting on subtitles. Mm-hmm. Uh, that way I could see the names and um, in case anything was mumbled or anything like that I could maybe you know be more aware of what what was being said and in this episode when when uh, Admir yells back to the work crew it says miscellaneous far speak f a r s oh okay yeah what does that mean far speak I've heard of it I've heard of it uh, before but I I can't tell you where it's from. Um, uh, yeah, in the Middle East, you know, we're used to like you know. It would have been nice countries. if they would have if if NBC would have taken the time and just translated two lines for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeez. you know what I hate though? I really hate subtitles on made-for-TV movies. I want to give you a really good example of this. When we mm. did Death Hits the Jackpot, and there's the Italian mother that lived, you know, in that you mm-hmm. know, quirky apartment building. Mm-hmm. Every time she spoke, they gave her subtitles, but the subtitles looked really bad. Like, they looked like credits more than subtitles. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you see movies, like foreign movies, the subtitles look, you know, kind of normal and okay. But when they're made for TV movies, it's just too... Uh, I don't know. I, I can't put my finger they on it. They didn't want to put too much money into it, I guess. Yeah. Um... It, it, by the way, uh, there's a couple really clever things that they do in here that sort of preempt the end of the episode. Uh-huh. Um, every every time that Finch goes somewhere where there's candy or something to drink, he's always grabbing a piece of candy and eating it. Um, when he in the in the opening scene when he goes to visit Montgomery's office, there's a secretary that has a dish of candy. He grabs one. When he goes to, uh, I almost said McKay. Fuck you, Steve. <laughs> when he goes to Mackie's office, Mackie has a uh, a bowl of candy. He's candy from that. He's seen drinking coffee from a stranger's coffee pot. This ten, this is his undoing. We find out at the end of the episode he likes is that stack. he has a yeah. He's he's a he's a snacker. He's a muncher, and he can't resist. That is beautiful that McGowan incorporated that in those. Yes, scenes. I bet you he didn't have to do that. No, no, and also. There are two or three scenes when uh, Columbo's talking to him where Columbo is carrying the um, police magazine that he's that he reads about Ted Bundy in. He's got it in his hands in a couple scenes the whole time. This is something I've never noticed Wait a until minute. this episode. So the whole teeth mark thing, was that a Ted Bundy thing? Yeah, that was a real thing. Really? Yeah. Because he's talking about, oh, I just read about this, uh, you know, this or that. And that he pulls out the magazine. He's he's holding that magazine in several scenes in this episode. Hmm. So, uh, Not pick up yeah. On. Yeah, you have to see this thing like a dozen times sometimes well, before there, you pick there, up There's on something these. else that was earlier said. I thought this is where you were going with it, but you, you didn't. Um, so when, when uh, Oscar is talking to McKay about... Uh, okay, Finch is talking to McKay. You, you want me to use the same... No, you said McKay again. It's Mackie. It's Mackie. Mackie. I cannot cannot get past it. I'm sorry. When Finch (laughs) is talking to Mackie, he says he's going to take him out for frozen yogurt. Oh, yeah, yeah. What was that about? 
take you out for the best frozen yogurt in town. My treat. Hey, he doesn't I don't have know. teeth marks when you eat yogurt. <laughs> well, you know, in the 90s, frozen yogurt basically just fucking cured cancer. Like, you, you know... You could go on a diet and eat nothing but frozen yogurt. Do you remember all the frozen yogurt yes, stuff there were? Yeah. Yeah. TCBY. Yes. Which stands right. for the country's best yogurt, and we still fucking have one in Austin. Wow. Yeah. Austin, of course, is known for its yogurt shops back when we had the yogurt shop murders. Um what in the early nineties before I what was the uh, yogurt what's the yogurt shop murders I'm not a, I'm not familiar with that um there were two or three girls that were in a yogurt shop uh, after hours mm-hmm. and a guy came in there and killed them oh. and got away and uh, I don't believe the police ever caught him but it, there was a huge crackdown in the way that the police handled it they you know they bungled a lot of different things you know like contaminated the crime scene and stuff so yeah. Huh. Yes. How if you want to listen to if you want to listen to a podcast about real murders, mm-hmm. check out My Favorite Murder. So, that's yeah. the name of the podcast, My Favorite yeah, Murder. Yeah, it's very oh. popular, way more popular than this podcast. I mean, I think that they probably have a million listeners compared to our two. So, <laughs> we have more than that. I think, you know that. I, There's way more than that. No, by this by this time we 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 only have two. We only have two, really. We've pissed everybody off. Oh, I fear, yeah. Oh, your your racial slur my, jokes and my my racial innuendo <laughs> and your and your, my... and your your political comments. Yeah, you, you you know yeah you can say whatever you want. You can say things about Asians being servants all the time. That that's okay. But the minute you say anything about white white trash is apparently someone's trigger point. I don't know what it is. And I was so, talking to this about this okay. to somebody, and they 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 agreed. They said, "Well, white trash isn't a very nice thing to say because I'm from Alabama." I'm like, "Okay, fine." I'm from uh, anyway. I'm sorry. Continue, Steve. I'm sorry. So I'm let's down. get back to the episode. Yeah. Again, so Colombo realizes he's not able to nail down Finch on any and on anything. So he does. He concentrates on uh, on uh, Mackie. Uh, I said it right that time. Uh, he concentrates on Mackie. And uh, and basically, Mackie is the one that puts the screws down on Finch, saying, what does he know? Or, what aren't you telling me? And and Finch basically explains, saying, I had to take care of this guy. He was, gonna, he was blackmailing us. Uh, I had to take care of it. And that's when Mackie decides he's going to go in and help uh, Finch um, cover it up. Uh-huh. So, yeah. it, it, as a result, he's now guilty, knowing about the crime, uh, and going to help cover it, cover it up. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, Columbo kind of will, I think he goes to Mackie trying to get to Finch, and even says something like, uh, Finch is not somebody I would perjure myself mm-hmm. on. Which I thought was an interesting statement. Yeah. Because it's going to, it's it, it's like a house of cards, yeah, and it's, absolutely. it's about to all fall because of because of Finch. Yeah. Steve, that's true. Oh, did I say something right? Oh, yay! Well, House of Cards, just like the uh, show with uh, Christopher Plummer there on the Netflix, or Kevin Spacey it's, it's, with his it, child loving. Oh, so, sorry, I don't know who that is. Christopher Plummer. Oh, is, that's not House of Cards, is it? What's what's the no, one with Kevin is. Spacey? It is. It is. No, oh, it's you're Kevin fooling Spacey, with me. But, but yeah, but we're not supposed to remember that he exists, so I just say Christopher Plummer. Because mm. they had that movie where he played um, the fucking millionaire, I don't remember who, it, Rockefeller or somebody, and mm. after that whole thing came out, they took all the footage of him, took it out, and had Christopher Plummer going and, and oh, do Oh, that was a Ridley instead. Scott film, right? I think so. I think it was called All the Money. Hmm. All the Money in the World or All the Money? Yeah. Yeah, I think did he play Rockefeller? I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, obviously, I haven't seen. So, yeah. Chris Christopher Plummer got an Academy Award nomination, however. But mm. anyway, so about this I time, think they, is yeah, when... apparently they're going to do the. I'll, go ahead. I wanted to talk about Christopher oh, Plummer. No, what were you going to say? Spacey, but somebody wants to talk about Columbo. Yeah, they, they <laughs> crazy, should just isn't take, it? <laughs> they should, they should, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh. <laughs> they should. <laughs> they should take. Christopher Plummer. They should take all the Kevin Spacey movies. And Kevin just Spacey have... would make a great new Columbo murderer. Oh my God! Yes. Oh, he would be awesome. 
I, I just watched American Beauty recently, mm-hmm. and yes, he would be a great Columbo. Absolutely. Murderer. Oh man. See, I think I think we could we could resurrect Kevin Spacey's career. Who would he, who? What kind of person could he play? Like, what would his uh, occupation be? Oh, he'd have to be a lawyer. I, I, a lawyer? Oh, you definitely. Think? Oh, yeah. But anyways, Maybe we're like getting a, back like to... A, uh... yeah. <sighs> okay, okay uh, right. so we find out that Montgomery has won the nomination for whatever party he belongs to. It's Democrat, I'm telling you. So wait, did he win the party nomination or did he win the election? He won the primary. Okay. So it's going to be him and the other guy or girl. Okay. You know, right. up for the, the, yeah. All right. Uh, so there's a, a celebrating, there's people wearing those stupid little hats. Um, the barbershop quartet hats. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I didn't know what they yeah. were called. Um, there's another name for them, but that's not what it is. And so Columbo, he doesn't have his paper bag or a box of, of shoes or anything like that with him, but he's he's now coming in for the kill. He's got a warrant. <laughs> For the first time ever, he actually has a fucking warrant. Because <laughs> he knows he's going to need it. I mean, yeah. when you go after a lawyer, especially a, a high-paying... And even and Columbo even admits that Finch is a very well... He's a very intelligent lawyer, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so he's he's got to play it by, by, the, by the rules here, I think, with this guy. So, yeah, he's got to have that warrant. And he says to him, before, the, before uh, Sergeant Kramer shows up with it... He says to him in the crowded room, he goes, I think you were there, sir. I believe that you killed Frank Staplin. And then they go in the other room and Finch says, that was a very, he says something like, that's a very extraordinary thing you said. And he, he follows that with, right when our relationship was getting so good or something like that. It's just so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, oh, that's sorry. yeah, it's just pure poppycock, really. I mean. <laughs> Unsubstantiated poppycock. <laughs> I like that word. I want to use it more in daily conversation. I, I really need to start. Doing it's that. it's best if you use it in an English accent. If like if my okay. if my manager tells me to do something I don't agree with, I should say poppycock. Poppycock. My dad used to say poppycock and balderdash. Boulder Dash. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, That's Boulder anyway. Dash. Boulder Dash. Um, isn't that the name of a game? Anyway, yes, okay. Uh, Columbo. Columbo. So, turns out um, he's got a warrant for Oscar Finch's arrest. Arrest. Sorry, and it's he, been some great Yeah, and he says it flat out. You're the murderer. Yeah. Uh, he talks about the suit. Uh, he talks about um, he got the gum out of Finch's um, waste paper basket. Right. Now, pause there. This is the only episode of Columbo. No, I take that back. There is another episode. But this is one of the few episodes of Columbo that is actually referenced in another episode. Yes, yes. So okay. when we, we reviewed... God, I don't even know when we reviewed... <laughs> We reviewed it, but Columbo goes to college. Yeah, very good, fantastic. And uh, yeah, no, I knew at this point when 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 he brought up the chewing gum and the teeth, Ooh. I went, Boulder Dash. No, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I said, aha, this was what Sean told me was going to come because you had informed me that he actually does reference. That was one of my questions to you. Uh, I said, is is Columbo actually referencing? murders that we're going to see on tv and that was that was your clue to me so that was that was yeah. neat to see that connection but the reason that he says that in, in in columbo goes to college is somebody asks him like lieutenant do you ever have to bend the rules and basically he took the piece of gum without a warrant and the question is is whether or not that that would be um fruit of the poisonous tree if you will whether or not um, Oscar Finch had a constitutional right to not have somebody go through his garbage. Yeah. And that point has been argued before in all the way to the Supreme Court. And I can't remember <laughs> what they said about it. Um, but um, 
is assuming Columbo was not a trespasser and that he was a welcome person in that office, yeah. which is an argument. I'm not really sure. Hmm. Uh, it's possible, and that uh, I think that there is a very good chance that Oscar Finch is going to go free at the end of the day. Oh, definitely. Oh, Columbo oh, I, I took think that gum without a warrant. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, I've got a problem with the final clue that nails Finch. Okay, <clears throat> first of all. Uh, I think you. I think you told me that, or somebody told me that, whatever re- Columbo was referencing, and Columbo goes to college, that didn't work out. Like it, it was, it was, it was not acceptable. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, anyways, uh, but my problem with this is now. Let me ask you: When you bite a piece of cheese, how do you? What teeth? If you have your front teeth. Your side or your back molars. What do you bite with the cheese? The, the front teeth. The front teeth. Because you're going to chew it with your back and then swallow. And that obviously is gone. Oh, I see. Where now the gum, do you chew your gum with your front teeth? I or, chew or the, it with the side of my teeth usually. Right. <laughs> so th- those aren't going to match. And two, why would those two things... Yeah, why would that correspond? So, I, I don't understand how that would be how you would nail somebody. That's a very good point, and I also think that the gum wouldn't even be big enough to get a positive match well, to what was on the cheese. Yeah, and you chew it constantly, so it's going to be distorted. You might have one. I don't know. The gum gets so chewed up that it's just a yeah bubbled. Or chewed up. I, I don't. I don't know if you could get anything out of that. Hmm. Wow, that's an excellent point. I, I was going to say my my problem with the final clue is that uh, Oscar Finch is a criminal defense attorney. It was an extremely stupid thing to leave a piece of cheese that not only you bit, but probably also has your fingerprints on it. Hmm. At the crime scene. But he's always grabbing food, so maybe he just forgot. I don't know. Maybe you're maybe he's, right. maybe he's diabetic doesn't... and he's always got to keep snacking. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if if Columbo found a piece of cheese, if 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 if, it, if Finch was eating cheese at his desk and Columbo found some cheese in the waste paper, that basket, would make more sense. Yeah, that would make more sense. But you're right. A single piece of gum, unless Finch is like one of those kids that just puts the whole pack of gum in his mouth, which I've done before. Did you ever do that? Oh, this gum's losing its flavor. Let me pop another piece in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Okay. Huh. Well, are you ready to uh, go ahead and review this thing? Yes. I All right. I know what so, number you're going to pick. Yeah, okay. I don't know if we discussed this before we hit the record button tonight, but you said you had been writing down numbers, mm-hmm. trying to guess what I would pull from this episode for the review. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to hear what you thought I was going to. I, I have something written down. I already know specifically I'm not going to pick something randomly uh, because you picked it. Um, but mm-hmm. what did you think? I, I want to hear some of the numbers you came up with. Okay. I, I don't remember where I got the first two, but they were pretty early on in the, in the story. Okay. Uh, the, the number 2,000 came up. I don't remember where. 2,000. The, okay. the number 559 came up. That was an address, I'm sure. Okay. I, I again. I don't remember. You know what? I remember it was on somebody's license. You know what? The, yes, it was on the license plate to Finch's car. Yes, because I, I was going license... to use that. I was. I was. I, I very close to using that. I think his license plate said two K five five nine. Um, I have eight thousand eight hundred and forty five. <laughs> Do you know what that is? No. What's that from? That's his phone number. The last four digits of his phone number. <laughs> okay. Wow. But this is the number I think you're going to pick because I just know you, and that number is 69. No, but where did you get 69? <sighs> uh, because 1969 was the year. Oh, that, uh, oh, when Frank. And yeah, they kept saying, thing. "Oh, back in '69 when you helped him." Blah 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 blah. Well, this number that I did pick did come from very early, like literally the first 30 seconds of the episode. So, Sean, you get to go first this time since I went first last time, I believe. Okay. What would you rate this episode? One out of seventy-six degrees. Seventy-six degrees. 
Oh my god, the the the, the weather broadcast at the beginning. Right, the radio oh, at the very beginning. Okay. Okay, out of the 76. So out of 76 um, degrees, not 76. 76 degrees. How many degrees would you rate this? I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I, okay, we did... I, um, I know this. you're setting me up. I'm going to tell you... Not Maybe go with the review. No, let me tell you something. Okay, shoot. Okay, so I've seen this a lot. Okay, the reason that I've seen this a lot is because I like it a lot. Okay, and I, I finally figured out why I like it. Um... Recently, we talked about uh, Columbo Likes Nightlife, one that I did not like that so much until we watched it for this that I really liked it, and I said, this might be my new favorite 90s episode. My favorite 90s episode before I watched Columbo Likes the Nightlife is this one, Agenda for Murder. Okay, And I think the reason is because out of all the 90s episodes, this is the one that feels the most like a 70s episode. Hmm. You could actually take the yeah. script... And just make it in the 70s. And it, it it works exactly the same. I mean, the mechanics are all there. There is nothing about this that we don't have any kind of silly, stupid jokes. We don't even have the This Old Man tune. It never comes up, to my knowledge. Are I you think sure? I think we, there was one little uh, remnant. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. And, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with McGowan. I really think that that's what he was going for. Um, I can't recall where this is er, fairly early on um, this is in the second year uh, or the second season of New Columbo I think um, so I really I really like this I think there's some great clues in this um, I love McGowan in this I love that um, he is so cold and calculating and even scenes where he just makes faces um, the scene where he gets off the phone with Staplin mm -hmm. And he just sits there for about four seconds and realizes that he's going to have to kill him. Um, he does it so well. There are scenes when uh, Columbo's in his office and he's talking about the blood and the gun. There's moments where um, you can see that that Finch is like, oh, fuck. But he's not letting Columbo see it because Columbo's not looking at him. Um, a nice touch is the scene where he slams his hand in anger on his steering wheel. Um, and I like everything except for the cheese. Up until tonight, I thought it was a well. It's a, a good clue, but I thought that Oscar Finch was just too smart to leave a piece of cheese that he bit into at the scene of the crime. Yeah, one night the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna. I would give it a 71. I still really like this. I think it's it's pretty darn close to being a perfect Columbo episode. However, I also thought that about. Caution can be murderous to your, or caution murder can be hazardous to your health, which is also one of my favorites. But you hated that, so I'm terrified <laughs> of what you're going to think of this. Um, so yeah, let's start off oh, with what I mentioned oh, no, earlier oh, in this oh, podcast. No, oh, no. <laughs> I oh, when no. I found out it was going to be a political uh, episode, I was I was like, oh shit! I was not looking forward to it. I, I I just knew it was going to be boring. It's going to be full of double speak and a bunch of lawyers. Blah 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 blah. I was just I I I kind of I I figured I'm just going to take really detailed notes and just rip it apart or you know. But I will say this, and I think it's to the benefit of um, Patrick McGowan that it saved it for me. I I think. He was such an intriguing guy. Literally, I I sat up uh, and started paying more attention when he started digging through his his tools and you know mm -hmm. the, the rubber gloves and he started taking the part the bullet. I'm thinking, what is he doing? Why is he putting the gunpowder into the tin foil? What it was he, he was just such a fascinating guy to watch. Um, and then you had. Uh, Louise, his secretary, who was played by... And I've seen her before. Has she yeah. been in Columbo before? Uh, uh, I don't think she's been in Columbo, but... Anne, I never, Anne uh, Haney, I think her name was, the actress. I think the biggest thing that she's been in may have been Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, she's no longer with us, by the way. Yeah. She's been dead for like okay. almost Ms. 20 Ms. years, I think. But yeah, I've seen her in other stuff. But yeah, she was fun. Um, you know, of course, any any scene with Peter Falk is just amazing, so... Uh, it was really up to how how well was the the guy playing the murderer, and I really think McGowan did 
um, an amazing job. So I really have very little I can criticize. Though it was interesting when you said it was it is a newer Columbo, but it felt like an older one. You're right, it does. You, you're you're absolutely correct in that. Um, couldn't agree more. So out of seventy six degrees, I'd give it a nice solid seventy degrees. Mm. Nice, nice temperature. Uh, so I enjoyed it. And again, this was me at the very beginning. The first five minutes, I was already bored to tears because I was <laughs> not interested in watching it after finding out what what the impression I was getting where it was going to go. But after that, it was it was totally a worthwhile uh, mystery. Absolutely wonderful. I think it may have dra- started to drag a little bit when they when they brought Mackie in. I almost said McKee. When they brought him in, <laughs> and you know he had to be. He ended up being more or less Oscar's accomplice. Yeah. But it still provided some really. There was a really good scene between Oscar and M- M- Mackie mm-hmm. in Mackie's office, where obviously Mackie's the one that's in charge. He's the boss. You know, he's the one that's going to be the vice president. But what happens in that scene is that Oscar takes charge, sits down at, at his Mackie's desk, yeah. desk, eats his candy, while Mackie is the one that's sitting in, you know, at the front of the desk, almost you know, begging him to tell the truth. And, and he, just, Oscar yeah, he's he's more cool. he's more worried. Uh, Finch is more worried about Columbo, but he knows he can control Mackie. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes, yes. Yeah, but the thing with the candy, I did not notice that at all, and that's just—I think that's just showing you the next level that McGowan was was doing with his acting. That is just absolutely. incredible. I, that, yeah. That's just amazing to me. If you watch it a second time, you'll notice that maybe in every other scene that he's in, he's snacking on something. Um, but all right, wow! I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed that. I did. And it was fun. I like I said, yeah. I wasn't wasn't expecting it, and I was going into it not thinking i was going to enjoy it but i did so the when this first came on tv um i had a friend that wanted to do something that night and um i said no i can't um colombo is going to be in. <laughs> so you would have been you would have been in high school uh i was in college um in the, in no the yeah i was in high school no you're right i was in high school I was probably a sophomore in high school, and I had to I had to watch Columbo, not only just to see it, but also you know because I could have taped it, but I had to be there with the remote control to press pause when the commercials came on. Um, now I wish that I didn't do that, and because I, I want to see commercials from the '90s, it sounds like fun. Um, and I had my friend Adam; he he just thought that was the stupidest reason ever to to, to not do whatever it was maybe he wanted to play i don't know what it was that he wanted to do kiss girls kiss girls or yeah (laughs) dnd so what he did that he thought was really funny is at the time i had my own phone line in my room which is a big thing yeah that was back kids kids nowadays they all got their own phones i had my own phone line wow you had your own phone Uh, line yeah i was lucky to have my own phone but it shared the same damn phone line as the whole house but okay (laughs) my my phone number was seven seven four Wait, seven seven three seven seven four seven eight four nine. Wow, I think that was right. You were spoiled. Yeah, I was. I was a spoiled. Fucking Your mom rat. was making that Louise money. Well, they didn't. You know, my parents. I, I. You know what though? I was working and I paid my own phone bill. So. And uh, I remember my friend Adam thought that was really rude. That you know I'm going to watch Columbo. So what he did was when the show started, he just started calling me, and he wouldn't stop calling me. He would just let the phone ring. What a, and what a ring dick. And ring. And, yes, Adam. Adam Mazio, who came to my house for for Thanksgiving last year. Uh, I got to bring it up to him. Do you remember that time I wanted to watch Columbo, and you kept calling my house? Gosh, now I've got a wait. podcast, bitch. Yeah, what do you do? Yeah, <laughs> what do you what do? do, you do? You're, what do you you're do? Google... You're Google you're, ad. You're making certified. six figures now. Well, <laughs> I got a Columbo podcast. Four people listen to it. It's more than We're that. Big in Alaska. Don't, don't undersell it. There's a lot more that, that watch it. They're yeah, listening to it. Are. Yeah, a lot more. You know. All that. right. Do we so, have any feedback? Uh, we do have some feedback. <gasps> There's one thing I kind of want to talk about. Um, something that I would normally save for uh, the news. But um, I forgot to mention it, and uh, this is cool. If you want to, if you want to check it out, Steve, I think you would like this. Um, 
I was uh, pottering around on Twitter today. Um, the Columbo Confab uh, podcast feed. If you, uh, by the way, if you want to follow the show on Twitter, Columbo Confab is is our Twitter handle, do and we, we do literally. I do literally. I do it, and I I do literally nothing except announce every week. You know, well, we're doing this episode, and you know, I I can't. I'm just not a Twitter person. I'm more of a Facebook person. But today I was, you know, twatting around on Twitter, and I found this Twitter account. Um, this man or woman, uh, Peter Fox as Columbo. Okay, now you may want to check this out. See, this is kind of cool. It's at Columbo Fox. Okay, Peter Fox. Get it? Not Peter Falk. Falk. Mm-hmm. Peter Fox as Columbo. And what they did was this is an artist slash illustrator, if you will, and they recreated scenes of of Columbo. Uh, these are still images. These aren't videos or cartoons or anything. They recreated scenes of Columbo and made the characters look like characters from old Disney cartoons, like classic Disney, like yeah. um, uh, uh, Jungle Book or, or the, uh, the uh, Aristocats or something like that. Not the not the 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 the, the, the new stuff, but classic Disney. Um, but they're all animals. Okay. Um, and and as the name suggests, Peter Fox is he's a fox. A red fox in a raincoat, and um, they've he he just made these random stills. Like the one um, every episode of Jack Cassidy, Jack Cassidy is actually a rabbit. Um, it, it's it's just really cool. I couldn't stop looking at it, and he's got little uh, subtitles. Sometimes he makes little montages of scenes. I just thought it was the coolest thing. He's got a little. Um, there was one. Remember in. Uh, Try and Catch Me, where Abigail Mitchell and um, Columbo are out in the pier mm-hmm. looking at the, the, the harbor. He's got yeah. one of that. I think you're a very nice man, Columbo. Don't count it on him, Miss Mitchell. Don't count on it. And the expressions on these characters' faces that he draws are so cool. They look exactly like... I, I, can't, un, I can't describe it, but he's got one of um, my favorite victim, Lily Lysenka from Murder by the Book. Oh, of course, she's a horse. And uh, Jack Cassidy, you know, they're they're drinking champagne, and he's like this, you know, snarly-looking rabbit. Good stuff. So check that out on Twitter. Um, he does good stuff. Uh, he's got about 600-something followers. One of these guys that he, he doesn't... Uh, uh, oh, oh, created by uh, at Cause Perry, K-O-S-P-E-R-R-Y. So check that out. I, I totally recommend it. Fun things on Twitter. Um, and I guess now we have to talk about uh, feedback. Uh, we do have feedback. We got one. Okay. Um, I want to thank those of you who have been leaving us positive feedback or just ratings on um, the podcast app. Uh, uh, we've had since the last one that we that we read out loud. We we have had a couple people go in there and rate the uh, podcast, I, and it was rated favorably, I believe. Um, so if you if you have the time, if you enjoy listening to us idiots uh, get drunk and talk about Columbo, please, by all means, go in there. It takes it takes literally like 20 seconds. Just plop in five stars. You don't even have to write anything if you don't want to. And uh, then that makes us, uh, I don't know, the, uh, the iTunes gnomes or the podcast gnomes that decide what order stuff comes up. Um, I don't know, makes it more popular or something. Actually, to be honest, the vast majority of human beings don't give a shit about Columbus. So I don't... No way. I don't believe that. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is, uh, we got an email here from Ed. I believe Ed has emailed us before. It's about No Time to Die. Do you remember No Time to Die? Steve? Ooh, what was that one about? That was the kidnapping one. Oh, okay. That... Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember yeah. that one. Yep. In fact, the scene, the... <clears throat> My uh, my uh, Skype avatar is the scene from that with the uh, lipstick. Yes, that was the best part. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Ed says, first off, I want to congratulate you for your success. Well earned. Because uh, uh, I don't remember this until I actually edited it. Apparently we bragged about ourselves, Steve. We're, we were very masturbatory, very self-congratulatory. No way. I, hard, I find that hard to believe. Okay. Yeah. He says, uh, Daniel McDonald played Rudy Strasse. Rudy Strasse was the uh, the kidnapper. Uh, McDonald is the younger brother of Christopher McDonald, best known for playing Shooter McGavin, 
Happy Gilmore, or as Jack Barry and Quiz Show, or a hundred other different roles. Yeah, Jack Barry and Quiz Show was the 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 host of uh, of the game show, and uh, he was also in that. Uh, um, it, it, Christopher McDonald was also in that uh, Tales from the Crypt episode with where he plays um, like a a reporter and he goes into the haunted house and it's live, but the, mm-hmm. of course the people in the haunted house end up killing him anyway. He looks like Morton Downey Jr. Hmm. The you know the guy who used to smoke the talk show host the obnoxious talk show host dead now from Long yes Park. he had like the big teeth yeah yes 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 uh, uh, Daniel McDonald that's the guy that was in No Time to Die he says he was also the nephew of Doobie brother Michael McDonald just kidding about that last part oh god okay I don't even know who the Doobie brothers are really they're they're uh... Aren't they a musical comedy team? I think they're just musical uh, a rock group. I think. Hmm. I don't know. Okay. I don't. I don't live in L.A. He says, but this is interesting. He says, but he was apparently Jennifer Aniston's first love. Hmm. He sadly passed away at forty-seven from brain cancer. He says, I enjoyed the show this week. I do every week, but this one is different because neither one of you guys really wanted to enjoy this episode and it eventually won you over. That's true. Columbo was still smoking cigars, or he did anyway in a later episode. Cigars and even a cat are clues. What's the what's the word on Columbo Confabicom? <laughs> I don't know if you remember, Steve, but back when we did yeah. uh, A Bird in the Hand, we talked about Columbo Con, maybe here yeah, in Austin or in Dallas. Yeah, nothing ever, ever came of yeah. that. Yeah, nothing, nothing, you know, fuck you, people, fuck you. <laughs> Jeez. He says, uh, unfortunately, I cannot attend skateboard injury in the family. <laughs> what? Say that without laughing. What? He can't attend because there was a skateboard injury in the family. Oh, that's I reference. thought you said, okay, that's not what I heard at all. Yeah, wait, wait, what did you hear? I heard gay porn in- injury. Well, that's why I won't be able to attend. Um, <laughs> okay, go on. Sorry. He says, unfortunately, I can't attend, but I hope it does happen. I hate to pop your bubble, to burst your bubble there, Ed, but it's uh, it's not going to happen. I don't think. No, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. yeah. Survey says... Uh, but again, we would uh, love to know who would go to a Columbo convention. Yeah, fucking yeah. Maybe you can get in touch with the Columbo podcasters over Skype or something and have a round table discussion. Thanks again for a great podcast, even though I'll be going through withdrawal in a couple of weeks waiting for season six. Uh, actually, you will not be waiting for long because um, the last episode of season uh, five just dropped today, and this is our last episode of season six. So uh, Very it's good. only going to be a couple weeks, as you say. And now a roundtable discussion with the other three Columbo podcasts that would be interesting. Yeah. Um, what's uh, well, a fun thing? Um, and I think that uh, we were the ones that started this uh, back when we were Doctor Who podcasters. Is that we would have people from different Doctor Who podcasts on, and. Um, I think for a short time there, being a guest on the TARDIS Tavern or being a guest bartender on the TARDIS Tavern was like being cast as a Columbo murderer for an actor. Like, it was that one thing, like, you know, no big deal, but if they ask you to do it, like, that's really cool and it's really fun because you can actually drink while you podcast. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't have any problems with any of the other Columbo podcasters. No, I would but, mind, yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, I got to brush up on my Scottish, and uh, uh, there's three of them, by the way. There's uh, the the Columbo podcast. Those are the Scottish fellas. Ian and, oh, I can't remember his, the other guy's name, but there's the uh, Just One More Thing podcast with uh, uh, Jonathan and uh, somebody, I, again, I can't remember. And then there's the, uh, then there's us, and then there's the Columboys, which is probably my favorite name, Columboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, which sounds like it would be some kind of gay, but I don't think it is. Um, mm-hmm. It's two guys with some very good recording equipment that uh, have a shorter podcast, and they're they're doing it in chronological order. Ah, so okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of, you're ready to pick our next episode for the start of season seven. That's 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 uh, that's Steve saying, "Okay, Sean, shut up." 
<laughs> no, it's not. I'm just trying to segue. Into... Let's let's. Oh my god, we've been at this for an hour and a half. Of course, five minutes. Yeah, five I minutes of that was uh, more than twenty minutes. But... We're, we're p p p breaks, but okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Steve, I've brought out the swinging wheel of the '70s. Would you please give it a spin? And away we go. I love these moments. All right, Steve, we are going to talk about a fairly early Hmm. episode. Yay. We're going to talk about a Robert Culp episode, Steve. Oh, Oh, God, I hope it's something they haven't seen yet. uh, We're going to talk about Death Lends a Hand. Okay, which think... is the second one in the series Death Lends a Hand so uh, so write this down now it's in series one so you don't have to or season one so you don't have to look through all the DVDs <laughs> yeah. to try to find it Yeah, probably on disc two after Murder by the Book So I think I've seen yeah. this one but really, we'll, we'll talk about it uh, in the future 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 you have that echoing so... effect that you could throw in on that I do have an echoing effect that I could throw in on that, but uh, I'm not gonna because I'm too lazy. Ah. So I, had to, I had to edit five like of these. Idiot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's my secondary yeah. reason for doing this podcast, Steve, to make me sound like an idiot. No. Awesome. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Nighty Say night, Steve. Thank you for listening to the Colombo Confab podcast. To email us with a comment or question, write to colomboconfab at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at Colombo Confab and look for us on Facebook. If you're enjoying the show, please leave us some happy reviews on iTunes. I love Colombo. Hello, I'm Sean, and I'm the host of the Thousand and One Movies podcast, based on the book A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. Each episode, I randomly pick a film from the book and spend about 10 minutes talking about its director, the cast, the genre, and my personal thoughts on the merits of the film. Each delicious yet bite-sized episode contains information about a film from practically any genre, any country, or any year. Check us out on iTunes, and we'll send you free cookies. Some restrictions apply.